And keep in mind, DHC has a five times higher binding affinity for SHBG. So it's even more problematic to look at total DHT only, especially via immunoassay results, which is what 99.9% .9 of people are doing. If they're even getting their DHT checked to begin with, they're looking at total DHT, not looking at total versus free. What's up guys, Derek from ourplacemoredates.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about what blood tests you should get done before you start finasteride or dutasteride or anything that inhibits 5-alpha reductase. Ideally, anything that inhibits anything androgen related endogenously, you should be getting this blood work done in my opinion. Anything that has to do with the endogenous secretion and or synthesis and or metabolization of sex hormones and androgens. Before you start screwing with the system, you want to have a baseline rating of this stuff because if you do end up with post finasteride syndrome or something along those lines or a manifestation of symptoms that are similar to post finasteride syndrome, and I say that with, you know, quotation marks, you want to understand why and actually see on your blood work what the likely reason for that is. And if you have these baseline markers, you can actually make an educated assessment if using finasteride is a good idea for you because you may be on the borderline of low androgen status to begin with and or low adrenal function and or a myriad of other issues, including estrogen dominance, including androgen dominance, including many other things. So at the end of the day, anyone who's gotten post finasteride syndrome, I can guarantee you they have not actually got this baseline blood work done to make an accurate assessment before and after what the actual biomarkers are that are thrown off that are resulting in their issues. Because it's not like this is something that is a permanent thing if you would otherwise be a healthy individual. This is something that is a result of acute deprivation leading to a deficiency and or an imbalance in something that is not addressed properly after discontinuing the drug. Because we all know that 5-alpha reductase is not irreversibly inhibited when you use finasteride or dutasteride. It in fact returns to a functioning enzyme after discontinuation of the drug and the drug has cleared the system. We can see this. And it's pretty damn easy to see your DHT levels in your blood work. So other things come into play, though, that are of note as well and are less common issues, which is why most people just by discontinuing the drug experience symptom relief after stopping. But for people who are borderline low androgen status to begin with and or have some sort of adrenal deficiencies in terms of endogenous adrenal steroid production and or overtaxing their system via 5-alpha reductase inhibition. There's a myriad of things that are less commonly issues but are worth noting nonetheless because if you do end up with post finasteride syndrome, you don't want to be in a position where you don't understand and or have these references to look at because you can only get this blood work done once. Once you start this drug, you can't go back and figure out what was you looked like before on your hormone profile. So just trying to stress the importance of this here. It's expensive, but it's worth doing if you're going to start manipulating your hormones. This is what I would be using if I was somebody who was about to start finasteride, dutasteride, or anything related to that. So the first thing, total testosterone determined via liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry, not through ECLIA, electrochemiluminescence immunoassay. That is not the test you want to get. You want to get LCMS MS for high sensitivity testing. For free testosterone, you want to get that determined via equilibrium dialysis or equilibrium ultrafiltration. Those are the high sensitivity tests that you can get done that are accurate. You don't want to get direct analog enzyme immunoassay, which is the standard one that is given out. Next, you want to get estradiol sensitive. So this is the sensitive assay version of the test, LCMS, MS, same thing again, liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry, not via Roche, ECLIA, electrochemiluminescence immunoassay. That is the inaccurate version that will give you a completely skewed reading. You want to get LCMS, MS, estradiol comma sensitive the next thing you want to get is dht levels checked via high pressure liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry hplc then you also want to get your free dht checked and you're going to get that ideally through equilibrium dialysis again so this is something that totally goes overlooked in the hair loss community is that there is different binding affinities for shbg between 
endogenous androgens or endogenous steroids, I should say. So you have DHT actually has a five times higher binding affinity than testosterone for SHBG. So why is this important? Because it's the exact same reason why your total testosterone versus your free testosterone is important. So you see, you probably already know the importance of the difference between actual testosterone available to tissues that's actually circulating around versus testosterone that's bound up to SHBG. This is like a pretty commonly um looked at thing like everyone knows you know total testosterone doesn't tell the whole story if you have a high total and a low free you can be hypogonadal and have all be symptomatic still the same thing with dht there's a total dht and there's a free dht and keep in mind dht has a five times higher binding affinity for shbg so it's even more problematic to look at total dht only especially via immunoassay results which is what 99.9% .9 of people are doing if they're even getting their DHT checked to begin with. They're looking at total DHT, not looking at total versus free. Because again, I need to reiterate how important this is. It's five times higher binding affinity for SHBG. So I'm sure you can imagine how much of an impact that's going to have on your overall androgen profile when this factor is the thing that's actually being inhibited by finasteride or dutasteride and it's not being assessed in blood tests accurately at all. It's not even being measured. You have people checking total via an inaccurate assay. You need to be getting the total and the free. And it's even more heavily manipulated because it's such a high binding affinity for SHBG. And if you have low estrogen levels or you're you know developing insulin resistance or you have low thyroid hormone production or you know a myriad of other issues you could have low shbg which then creates the same kind of issue that you would have with like women with polycystic ovarian syndrome where they're androgen dominant because their shbg is crushed into the ground even though they only have like a 100 nanogram per deciliter test level at most or they're like 80 to 100 which is like seven times less than what we would consider an actual good testosterone level in men. And they're experiencing male pattern baldness from this androgen dominant environment, literally created by their SHBG being in the toilet. So if you have some issue that's causing your SHBG to be in the toilet, and DHT has a five times higher binding affinity for test, you can just imagine how much of an issue that's going to create on your ratio of total androgens relative to free circulating around androgens that are available to tissues to transcribe their effects, bind to androgen receptors and cause transcription, androgenic alopecia, all the issues. <laughs> so I'm not saying that they in, you want it to be bound to SHBG. I'm just saying this is the way your body regulates your hormone profile and creates the environment and balances out the hormones. If you have a subpar amount of SHBG, you are essentially deficient of the regulating mechanism in your body that determines how your hormone profile is balanced. If you have low SHBG, you pretty much have like a fire hydrant exploding that is just like not being accounted for and you have androgens flying all over the place. You have your free testosterone is disproportionately higher than your total testosterone and your free DHT is even more disproportionately higher than your total DHT in the ratio, not actually like an absolute value, but you know what I mean. There's a ratio for a reason from free to total T and it's to determine if you have a good, you know, regulation of sex hormones in your body and it's determined by your SHBG. So the same thing is going to happen with low SHBG with your DHT levels. You're going to have an androgen dominant environment if you are SHBG deficient. So this is Obviously, your free DHT is important to check, but on top of that, you need to check your SHBG, your sex hormone binding globulin levels, which for all the reasons I just outlined, it has a certain binding affinity for all the endogenous steroids in your body, and the highest binding affinity is DHT, so that is critical to check because if that is impacted by something you want to see why it changed where it changed what changed what caused it what's the root how do you fix it blah blah, blah. next thing you want to check progesterone in addition prolactin prostate specific antigen psa follicle stimulating hormone fsh luteinizing hormone lh then we look at thyroid hormones too tsh free t4 free t3 reverse t3 thyroglobulin antibodies, thyroid peroxidase antibodies. So basically, if there's an underlying autoimmune issue causing your, you know, uh, hair loss, then uh, this is just something that is good to check as well. And obviously downstream, there can be some effects on the thyroid potentially through androgen deprivation. So 
it would be prudent to get this. It's not like the most critical thing to check, but if I had the option of checking every marker that I thought was important, this would be on there. On top of the thyroid panel, DHEAS, so dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate. So this is uh, adrenal steroid, essentially, that is um, often overlooked as well. If you have some sort of taxing on your adrenals, this is something you want to see beforehand, as well as your pregnenolone levels. And while there is no way to actually check allopregnenolone in the blood, or at least there is no lab that commercially offers it, we can at least use these other values as proxies for your neurosteroid production and your adrenal function. So if you are on the off chance, one of the minority of individuals who has perfect androgen levels, bioavailable, your balance of androgens to estrogens is perfect, your SHBG is regulating everything properly, which honestly is the issue for most people is they have some sort of disproportionate imbalance between their bioavailable or their non-bioavailable androgens relative to free circulating estrogens, or they're just androgen deficient to begin with, the lesser, more uncommon issue is neurosteroid deprivation, which would point to adrenals in the upstream, you know, steroidogenesis pathway where you could then address, okay, what's going on here? Do I have enough pregnenolone being created? Do I have this being created? Do I have this? There's a lot of things you can look at that you can use as proxies for this allopregnenolone, which is, you know, often, you know, hyped up as, oh, this, this is the neurosteroids that, that's deprived and it's causing all the issues. And it's like, if your 5-alpha reductase enzyme is functioning correctly and the drug has cleared your system to the point where you can actually see where all the absolute values of things are, it's going to be pretty easy at that point once 5-alpha reductase function has been restored to actually see the physical manifestation in your blood work of where you are off so definitely get this checked i would get a full lipid panel done just for the sake of assessing your health markers in general a lipid panel is a good idea and it is going to be good to see how inhibiting dht levels might have a downstream effect on your lipids in addition to that that's pretty that's what i would get as far as if i could get everything there was no you know budget there was no nothing frankly when it comes to this stuff there should be no budget though i would highly recommend you actually invest the money Spend the thousand bucks, whatever the fuck it costs, get the actual blood test that you need and uh, make sure you're going into it like bulletproof or you are at least assessing properly what is my risk tolerance here? Because if you have this full thing, you can see with pretty good accuracy before you even start finasteride what your likelihood is of encountering side effects. If you're, let's just say hypothetically, you're on the low end of the spectrum of DHT, and your free testosterone, even if your total testosterone is a thousand nanograms, but your free is like the first quarter, like quarter of the reference range of the free testosterone, and you're just barely hanging on by a thread for physiologic functions that are supported by endogenous androgens. And then you, you can like physically see in your blood work, okay, if I deprive my DHT even further, I don't really have a lot of free testosterone to tissues to support this you know, big drop I'm about to create an androgenicity in the body. So like there's really easy ways to see, or if, another example, let's just say your estrogen level is like already on the top end of the reference range. And on top of that, you're like borderline, like maybe on the lower end of normal for free testosterone and DHT. And you're like, already in a pretty like borderline estrogen dominant environment that would be a surefire you know indication that you might end up with gynecomastia when you start finasteride so maybe you might not want to start finasteride or you, there are precautions you should take to ensure that you are at least prepared for mitigating it should it become an issue you know a lot of things that can make you very well prepared and or give you an indication if this is a drug you're going to tolerate whether like well before you even use it so this is there's no downside to doing this and if i was to say uh, one thing i should note too which often goes overlooked if you're using a biotin supplement which obviously a lot of people who you know have hair loss probably use biotin supplement on assuming that you know 10,000 micrograms of biotin is going to help which by the way you're probably not deficient in biotin if you have a multivitamin or you have a good diet in general, which hopefully you do, you're probably not deficient in biotin, but a lot of people take a ton of biotin anyways for that have hair loss. Make sure you stop using it at least 72 hours prior to any of these blood tests because it can uh, interfere with the readings. So you definitely don't want to spend like 
$750,000 on blood work and then find out all your results can be potentially skewed to some extent because you forgot to stop your biotin. On top of that, this is like a thing that you would be using for life probably. If you're starting a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, hair loss prevention is a continuous thing. It's not like you can just, you know, take it sporadically and somehow prevent loss for your whole life. So it's worth putting the money up front to get this baseline panel because you're never going to be able to see what your hormone levels were prior to finasteride again. So I highly recommend you invest in this. As far as like, let's just say like the light version of this, if you didn't want to, you know, shell out the money for all this stuff, what's like the bare minimum I would recommend you absolutely get. It is the total testosterone, the free testosterone, the estradiol sensitive, the DHT, the free DHT, the SHBG, I would get prolactin checked as well. DHEAS, I would also highly recommend. And that would be the most important things in my opinion. You might want to get your pr prostate specific antigen as well. But the other things, they're not like negligible, but I guess they're less, they're not as critical for creating this clear picture that we're going to need afterwards because if you have this full thing you can pretty much like map out your entire like steroidogenesis pathway and then determine like this is what is wrong you know what i mean or be like this is the precursor of this and this is the symptom i'm having and this is why this isn't working and this is where this is and this should be in a ratio of this to this and it's just like the most clear picture ever of exactly what's going on you can predict with a high level of accuracy if you're going to encounter a side effect and or figure out how to mitigate a side effect should it crop up so this is uh something i highly recommend obviously so anyways thank you guys for watching please like subscribe i will uh I don't know what I'm going to do as far as like linking where to get it. Like I can show you where I've spent upwards of a thousand dollars on blood work myself to make sure I was, uh, any of my experiments that I see as potentially like efficacious options for hair loss prevention. I always establish via my own blood work to make sure if it is something that, uh, agrees with my body or not. And I've spent, I've literally I drive over the border into a different country to get my blood tests done so I can get these assays because I can't get them in my country. And I pay out of pocket for this. It's not even covered by insurance. So it's worth it. I've done it multiple times and um, it's uh, a worthwhile investment. It's your health we're talking about here. And I will uh, link down below something, at least for the majority of these tests of where I get them or where I would recommend getting them. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to like get a link to all of them like cumulatively in one you know like bundle because there's a lot of like really specific like tests that aren't commonly ordered in here so you might have to add a lot of them separately to your cart but for whatever i can like lump into like different sections and like figure out how to somehow make this as cost effective as possible i will put the links in the video description below and um show you where i get my stuff done anyways and then if you can get it for free through your doctor somehow then like obviously do that but i mean if you have to do the self-pay route like i do then i'll put the links down below for you i just want to interject here to tell you guys where to get comprehensive pre finasteride panels as well as a light version that has the most important biomarkers in my opinion but is a cheaper more budget-friendly version so i actually recorded the content of the main video several months ago and this was something i put on the back burner because i wanted to actually be able to show you guys what to get rather than just talk about it and then send you out and not be able to get it because it's honestly impossible to find all these biomarkers separately and i checked high and low and i could not find any lab that even has all of the markers offered that i needed let alone in a comprehensive panel like all bundled together at a reasonable price so if you went and bought all these markers separately you would be looking at like two thousand bucks probably it's just ridiculous so i actually once i bought equity in my hrt clinic i actually went and compiled a panel myself and it took a while to get this organized but it's finally ready and this is why i held off from publishing the video so now i actually have my own pre finasteride panels here in the lab packages section of the evolve site so if you go in the video description you're going to 
to see the links to the lab panel section from here. So once you get to the page, you can add it to your cart here and buy it, but everything included in it is in the product description here. So you can see everything I mentioned in the video, as well as some extras that I thought of afterwards that I kind of overlooked during the recording of the video. We have IGF-1, we have a high quality NMR LiPo profile, as opposed to just a standard lipid panel that most labs will test for. We have cortisol in there. We have vitamin D in there. We have a CBC with differential comprehensive metabolic panel, which is just like basic health stuff. And we have ferritin, we have iron, we have um, hemoglobin A1C. We have lots of stuff in here. In addition to the main things and the meat and potatoes of this that really matters, like the total testosterone with the high sensitivity testing, the free test, the estrogen, the DHT, the free DHT, SHBG, progesterone, prolactin, etc. Everything you could possibly need is in this test. If you want to get a more budget, and frankly, this price is absurd for the amount of stuff in here. Like I paid over a thousand dollars for my panel I got for my DECA only experiment. And that was way less stuff than this. Like I didn't get these, like this test on its own, DHT, high sensitivity and free DHT, like would run, run you a couple hundred bucks at minimum. Adding these to it, that's another couple hundred bucks. Adding any of this stuff, IGF-1, you're looking at like what, like 70 to 100 bucks with any clinic. Um, getting an NMR lipo profile. Like some of this stuff, just like half this stuff would add up to 600 with like any other panel, to be honest. It's, it's expensive, but it's, you know, if you actually compare it to other labs and other lab panels, like there's no one compiling this, all of these tests in one specifically geared towards this exact purpose, as well as with the high quality testing available and a bunch of tests that most labs just don't even have or don't, I guess, don't advertise on their sites. So like free DHT, for example, which is obviously pretty damn important when you're taking something that literally kills your DHT levels. So good to know on that, right? There's also going to be a standard, more budget friendly version of the panel that has kind of the meat and potatoes of it and some of the extras kind of skimmed off and I'll show you that right now. So that is going to be the standard pre finasteride panel as opposed to the comprehensive one that I just showed you guys. So the standard pre finasteride panel, a couple hundred bucks cheaper, but we still have all of the high sensitivity testing and the meat and potatoes of it that you'll need to know your total test, liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry, free test, equilibrium dialysis, estradiol sensitive, DHT total, free DHT and SHBG, all with the highest sensitivity testing, the gold standard in the industry. There is no panel that has all this stuff. And frankly, I have yet to see a company that even has free DHT. Usually you have to add DHT separately and it's very expensive. And then they won't have these markers added to it. And honestly, it's kind of, I feel like this panel should be available at more places. So anyways, hopefully Hopefully that helps uh, some of you guys out. And I wish I had this when I first got into this stuff. Not that I, I was lucky that I didn't encounter any side effects from finasteride myself or dutasteride really. However, just to be prudent and health conscious, I definitely would have done this had I known what I know now. So um, yeah, that is where you can get the panels if you are interested. Please like subscribe. Like I said, drop a comment really helps the algorithm helps push the content to a new audience that otherwise might not see it and show it in their you know, like recommended sidebar and stuff. So a lot of guys would benefit from seeing this video. So I do would really appreciate if you guys put the comment down, put the like, hit the like button and help push this video to people who do need to see this before they start using drugs in their body haphazardly from a doctor who doesn't even tell them to check as basic of a thing as a testosterone level before starting a drug that literally deprives them of their androgens. Also highly recommend you click on the mailing list link in the video description as well if you wanna get notified when I publish articles. They're far more in depth and elaborate than these videos and have table of contents, um, concise subsections with uh, all the hyperlinks to the clinical studies that I reference, as well as, for example, on this one, it's gonna have the type of test for that test you wanna get, like the assay that you wanna get, and the incorrect one you don't wanna get, those are gonna be listed in the article as well, as well as any kind of elaborate information that would otherwise, you know, not be easily interpreted in the video that is going to be better written out so you can actually read through it yourself and do your own research and delve into the data I referred to and, you know, do your own personal digging and whatnot so you can learn further for yourself as well. So I highly recommend you sign up for that because you won't get emailed those articles if you do not sign up for the newsletter. Follow me on Instagram, at more plates underscore more days, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, uh, wherever I am, Apple Podcasts. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.